Hi guys, welcome to this video on the ankle joint. We're going to take a look at the joint. We'll look at the bones, the muscles, the various connective tissues. Uh, talk a little bit about the movements available at the ankle and then finish up relating all this to different kinds of sports and sporting movements. Let's get going. So in terms of the bones then, you can see on the screen we've got a couple of uh, diagrams, both of which are the right ankle. Uh, the larger diagram is the lateral view, so looking from the side of the right ankle, uh, from outside the right ankle. And the second, the smaller diagram at the top is the superior view, that's looking down from above. So we're looking down on top of the foot from above. Uh, let's label some of these uh, bones then, shall we? So first of all, we've got the fibula. So the fibula is the smaller of the two bones of the lower leg, uh, which come down to meet the ankle. Uh, and then on the outside, so we can see it here on the lateral view, the, the bottom part of the fibula that extends downwards is known as the lateral malleolus, the lateral malleolus. Now malleolus is just the, the section that extends down. Um, and you can probably see it more clearly, in fact, on the smaller diagram from the superior view, extends down and sort of covers over the ankle joint somewhat. Uh, it's called the lateral malleolus because it's on the lateral side, which is the outside away from the medial line. There is, of course, a medial malleolus on the inside as well, uh, but we can't see that on the lateral view uh, of this particular diagram. Uh, after this, we've got the tibia, which is the larger of the two bones of the lower leg. Then working our way along the foot, uh, we've got the talus, um, which is uh, kind of the, the, the ankle joint proper, I suppose. The talus joins the, the tibia. After this, the heel bone, which is technically known as the calcaneus, and we'll talk about attachments and things like that to the calcaneus shortly. So the calcaneus, one of the larger bones of the foot, uh, which sticks out of the back. Then moving along, we've got the cuboid. So this, this one large, obviously it's relatively cube shaped, hence the name. Uh, after this, we've got the navicular. Uh, and then the smaller bones, you can see these three smaller bones from the from the superior view, uh, known as the cuneiform bones. And then we get simply enough into the, the five metatarsals, uh, which are the long bones in the sort of the center part of the foot. And then eventually they uh, move along towards the phalanges. So those are the, the bones of the foot. Um, particularly we're interested really in the, in the ankle, uh, but we've, we'll cover the whole of the foot just for now. Let's take a look at the muscles then. So there's plenty of muscles in the lower leg that affect the movement of the ankle. I'm not going to talk to you about all of them, but just to pick out some key muscles uh, that will be helpful for you. Uh, on the posterior part of the lower leg, at the back, uh, we've got the gastrocnemius and the soleus, which will be the two main muscles that enable um, the, the ankle to be moved. We'll talk about the specific movements in just a moment. And also to a lesser extent, the fibularis longus. Then at the front of the, uh, the shin, the front of the lower leg, we've got the tibialis anterior, which is the main muscle uh, predominantly involved in, in moving the ankle joint uh, in order to lift the toes up. Um, but also involved at the front are a range of other extensor uh, muscles, digital extensors, the hallux longus and, and so on. Um, a whole bunch of them that do different movements uh, with the foot and particularly lifting up the big toe and, and things like that. So we've got some muscles at the back, some muscles at the front, obviously making opposite movements around the ankle. So how are they connected? So in terms of connective tissue, then we'll start off with a fairly well known one. Uh, we've got the Achilles tendon, which you've probably heard of. So the Achilles tendon runs, it's, it's the tendon that links both the gastrocnemius and the soleus. They both merge into this tendon and then attach via the tendon onto the calcaneus or the calcaneal bone, the heel bone. So that when the gastrocnemius and the soleus contract, they're going to pull on the Achilles tendon, which in turn pulls on the calcaneus to create movement in the ankle joint. Um, other tendons here. We've got the tendons of the digital extensors, which we mentioned previously that allow us to move our toes. If you were to take your shoes and socks off uh, and wiggle your toes, you'd probably see uh, some of those uh, tendons moving in the top of your foot. Um, alongside this, and it, unfortunately not visible on this particular diagram, is the, uh, the tendon of the tibialis anterior, which, which runs down the front of the lower leg um, and again enables us to lift up our, our foot, uh, lift up the toes in particular. 
um, or in fact the whole of the foot, um, that comes down the front of the shin and insert on the medial cuneiform. So if you cast your mind back to the bones diagram, there were those three cuneiform bones. The medial cuneiform obviously is the middle one, uh, which is where the, the tendon of the um, tibialis anterior actually comes and inserts. After this then, uh, we've got some ligaments to talk about. So um, the key ligament, I guess, would be the calcaneofibular ligament. And it's called that because it links the calcaneus and the fibula. Um, so from the um, from the malleolus, the, the lateral malleolus, as you can see here, um, it, it runs down and posteriorly to the side or the top and the side, um, the, the lateral side of the uh, of the calcaneus bone and its purpose essentially is to give stability to the ankle and um it's 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 a joint that's often uh, not a joint it's a it's a ligament that's often damaged uh, when we get ankle sprains um after this we've got the retinacular the retinacular so a retinaculum is uh, is thickened tissue or thickened uh, fascia that supports or sits around a tendon and holds a tendon in place. So it's not part of the muscle, it's not linked to any of the muscles here, it's just sitting around the tendon and its function basically is to stabilize um, the tendon in its proper location. So that when the tendon, when the muscles contract, the tendon pulls in the right direction, in the right angle and so on. So that's what the retinacular are for. And there's several retinacular in the, in the foot and you can see a couple here. Um, beyond this, then, we've got uh, one other thing to mention, which isn't immediately obvious on the diagram. So there's a second diagram here uh, to point this out to you, something known as the plantar fascia or fascia, either is fine, uh, which is a, a thick ligament. Um, it's kind of like a like a web. You can imagine it. You can see on the on the diagram in the top right, it's kind of a web shaped ligament connecting the calcaneus to the phalanges and its role is really it's kind of a, a shock absorber um, it's it supports the foot arch and it also provides a little bit of elastic rebound uh, when you're running or, or, or walking quickly at pace um, so the plantar fascia or plantar fascia is not not immediately obvious from the larger diagram but you can see it there on the smaller diagram okay let's talk about the movements that are available at the ankle now, it's important to note that the ankle is a somewhat peculiar joint. It's not a straightforward hinge joint. Um, the, you'll notice that the calcaneus juts out somewhat at the back uh, posteriorly. And so therefore, when we point our toes down, the angle between the calcaneal bone, the calcaneus, and the, the bones of the lower leg, that angle is going to decrease, which means that it's flexion that we're, we're causing here. Um, but then if you think about the front of the foot, if we lift our toes up, making the opposite movement, the angle at the front of the foot, uh, between the talus in particular, and, the, and in fact the rest of the foot, and the bones of the lower leg, that angle is also decreasing. Which means we have opposite movements, both of which cause a decrease in the angle. Which means that opposite movements, both of which are flexion. And so for the ankle joint and for the ankle joint only, we would distinguish between those two types of flexion, even though they're opposite movements, we distinguish between those two types of flexion with specific specialized names. So when we point our toes down, we're reducing the angle at the back of the ankle joint. That movement is known as plantar flexion, plantar flexion. And when we reduce the angle at the front of the ankle joint, that is known as dorsiflexion. So plantar flexion at the back, dorsiflexion at the front. But both are types of flexion. So as I said, in order to distinguish between the two types of flexion, the ankle has to have specialized terminology. Plantar flexion is pointing the toes down. And I usually remember that by saying I plant my toes into the ground. So plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. A second type of movement um, here is what happens if we turn our ankle or either the sole of the foot inwards or outwards. So we can turn our, our foot, we can turn the whole foot inwards uh, or we can turn the foot outwards. In fact, it's easier to turn the foot inwards. We get more of a range of movement inwards than we do outwards. Um, but they've also got their own names as well. So if we turn the sole of the foot pointing inward medially, 
If the sole of the foot points medially, we know that movement as inversion. In as in in towards the middle of the body. So that is inversion. And if the sole of the foot moves outward, we call that eversion. Inversion and eversion. Now, you may have heard other terms related to movement of the foot, um, such as pronation and supination. I'm not going to deal with that here because they're to do with the foot as a whole rather than just focusing in on the ankle joint itself. The ankle joint is one of the elements that contributes to supination and pronation. Um, but there are other movements that have to be in the mix in order to get pronation and supination of the feet. So I'm, I'm going to bypass that for now. In terms of uses in sport, then just to pick a few random ones, um, we've got somebody squatting here, we've got somebody uh, doing gymnastics and we've got somebody running. Um, you might notice, first of all, these two ankles, both of these ankles, um, what would you say? Are they in um, dorsiflexion or are they in plantar flexion? Well, the angle at the back, the angle at the heel is the angle that's been flexed. Therefore, it's plantar flexion. So both of these are examples of plantar flexion. Of course, plantar flexion is necessary when pushing off uh, in, in a running motion. Um, we push against the ground. We produce plantar flexion by contracting the gastrocnemius muscles in particular. And that's how we do it there. The gastrocnemius muscles are also working in the, in the gymnast in order to um, plantar flex her ankle so that she can have nice straight toes. Um, the squatter here, the person squatting on the left, um, this ankle, what would you say is happening at this ankle? Well, the angle at the front of the foot this time has been reduced. So we've got flexion at the front of the foot, which means that this particular flexion is dorsiflexion. So hopefully now you know the difference between plantar and dorsiflexion. Have some understanding of the different movements available at the ankle. Some of the connective tissue, the muscles and the bones. I hope that's been helpful for you. I'll see you in the next video, but that's all for now. Take care.